Hey guys, uh, in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to set up teleporters, just like the ones that you see right here. And before we get into how to code it in Blueprints, I just want to show you exactly the end result, what it's going to look like, so that you know what you'll be getting out of this tutorial. So as you can see, we have eight teleporters. The red one goes to the red one, the green one goes to the green one, blue to blue, and purple to purple. Now each of them have slightly different properties set, and I'll just walk you through those right now so you can see exactly how those work. So this red one goes to the red one, and if you click on it, there's three things for each teleporter that you can set. One of them being the destination teleporter, and that is basically the teleporter that if you go inside of this one, it will teleport you to. So for this teleporter, we want the destination teleporter to be set to this one over here on the grass. So if you click this drop down, you can select from all the teleporters in your game. And I just have mine kind of named Telly and then brick or grass and then the color. So this one needs to be set to Telly, grass, red, like so. So now it's set to this one over here. The second thing you can set is the color. And this doesn't actually do anything functionality wise. It's just nice so that you can match up one teleporter to another. So you can see you can change it to whatever you want. Um, but for now, I'm just going to keep it as red. And then the last thing is this maintain active rotation. So if you see on the teleporters, all of them have this red arrow. And the red arrow only shows up when you're in the editor. If you run it, you'll see it goes away. But what this red arrow means is it's basically the direction that the teleporter is facing. So if you rotate the teleporter, the arrow will rotate with it. And it just gives you some indication of which way it's facing. So if you check maintain act rotation, which I have it checked by default, then it kind of ignores this arrow and it just says, keep the actor's rotation when he goes in the portal the same as when he comes out of it. But if you uncheck this, then when the, if I go from this portal to this portal, then when I come out of this portal over here, my rotation will be set to whatever this arrow direction is. And I'll demonstrate that here in a second. But for now, we're going to leave this checked to show you how it looks. So again, we're going to maintain my rotation. So when I walk in it, I go out the other one and my rotation maintains the same. Or in other words, I keep going in the direction that I was going before. Uh, if you jump through it, it also maintains it and everything's good. The green one is set up exactly the same way. It's just that it's on an elevation, just to show you that it correctly handles elevations. Now this blue one is set up to not maintain my rotation. And if you remember real quick in the editor, the arrows are pointing towards this gap in the floor. So when I come out of either of these portals, I should be moving towards this gap, regardless of how I enter it. So even if I run at it going away from the gap, I'll come out facing the gap. Now this pink one, I'm going to have to change it a bit. There's one more feature. If you only want to make a portal so that it's one way, because right now all these portals are two ways. So, you know, this one will bring you to that one and this one will bring you to that one. If you want to make a one way portal, you can do that really easily. You simply just say that it doesn't have a destination. So I'm going to do it for this one so we can actually get back. So if you go over to this one and you just remove the destination teleporter, you can see it goes to none and the portal changes to a gray color to show you that uh, it's not going to bring you anywhere. But you can still get to it from this portal. So if I go ahead and run it, and again, that one's gray over there, I walk through this one and I go out that gray one because they're linked to each other. But this one is not, this gray one is not linked to that purple one. So if I try to go through the, purp the gray one, it doesn't bring me anywhere. So you can essentially create like a one-way teleporter if you want. And the last little feature is just kind of like a convenience thing. So if you try to set a teleporter to teleport to itself, it won't let you because that's kind of weird. So this one is the Tele Brick Purple. So if I try to set the destination portal to Tele Brick Purple, which is itself, it will automatically go to none so that you can't uh, mess anything up. So that's basically what we're going to be doing. And I guess we'll just jump right into it. So if you open the Epic's Game Launcher and launch the latest version, of your engine. We're going to be doing all of this through Blueprints. So we're going to make a new project and make sure Blueprints is selected and then select third person. And I'll call mine my Tele project or something like that. 
and we'll say create project. And I'm going to drag this one over here just so I can kind of reference it as I go along. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is create the teleporter blueprint. So we'll come right here, just make a new folder called teller, tele, teleporter. <laughs> and inside here, make a new blueprint class of type actor. And we'll call it BP teleporter. And if we open this up, we're going to want to set or add a few components. The first one we want to add is a static mesh component. And this is going to be the base of our teleporter. So we're going to select shape underscore, underscore cube. And we want to scale this so it's kind of flat. So we'll say 0 0.1. And I'll make it a little wider, maybe 1.5 and 1.5. So this is just the base of our teleporter, nothing too special. And we want to add one more static mesh for the teleporter itself, the colored section. And we'll call this um, portal mesh, just so we can reference it easily. And I think I'll just rename this one to portal base. Okay. And for this one, we want to use a shape underscore cylinder. And we're going to have to scale this a bit so it looks a little better because right now it's just kind of flat. So let's set the Z to 25 and the X and the Y to 0 0.75. And we want to just drag this down so it's kind of sitting on top like so. Okay. Now, you, if you notice in the video, my teleporter was kind of transparent and that's because I had a nice little material on it. So we're going to go and create that material real quick. So just come back to the content browser, right click, select material, call it M underscore teleporter and double click on this to open it up. And we want to do two things. The first thing we want is a constant vector three as it's going to be the color. And if you right click and convert it to a parameter, we can give it a name and we'll call it color. And we'll hook that up like so. And we'll change the default to just be some green color. It doesn't really matter because we're going to be changing it anyways. And we also want to make it kind of translucent. So click over here and on the left under blend mode, change it to translucent. And we need to specify a opacity for it because right now it's just uh, set to one. So type in constant and we'll give it a value of 0 0.5 and hook that up to the opacity. Now, if we apply and save it, you'll see it is a nice uh, transparent green color, which is exactly what we want. So if we come back to our teleporter, we want to assign this texture, or sorry, this material that we just made to this little cylinder here. And we can do it right here, but it's not actually going to matter if we do it right here because it needs to be a material instance so that we can actually change the color of it at runtime. So we're actually going to want to do that in the constructor. So if we go back to our construction script of our teleporter, we can set it in here. So the first thing we want to do is check if we have a destination teleporter. And currently, we don't have a variable for that, so we need to create one. So click Create Variable and type in destination teleporter. And we're going to change this to type BP teleporter. And we want to click this little I here so that it is editable in the editor. And we might as well just create our other variables here real quick. Um, another one we're going to need is one for incoming incoming actors. And this is going to be an array of actors. So come up here and search for actors. 
or just actor. Select object reference and click on this little ball and change it to the array. And then again, we want one for color. And this is going to be a linear color. Set it to single variable. And again, we want this one to be exposed, so we'll click on the little eye. And the last one we want is a bool for whether or not we want to maintain the actor's rotation. And so we got a bool. Okay, so these are all of our variables. Um, the first thing we want to check is, like I said, is if the destination is valid or not. And if it's valid, we want to set it to whatever color they select. If it's not valid, then we just want to set it to gray. So to do that, we need to create a dynamic material instance. So we will right click and say create dynamic material instance. And the parent material is the m underscore teleport material that we created. So m underscore teleport or teleporter. And we will just make this a local variable so we can easily access it. And we'll rename it to material instance, like so. And we need to set our portal mesh, which again is just this cylinder. We need to set its material to that material. So we'll say portal mesh, set material, and we will set it to the material instance that we just created. Okay, so now when our portal gets constructed, its material will be set to this material. So now what we need to do is figure out which color to set that material to. And again, like I said, we want to do that based on if it has a destination teleporter. So drag out destination portal. And over here, we will do a is valid. And off that, we will do a select node. And we want to drag in our local material instance and say set vector parameter value. And this is how we're gonna set this color parameter is with this node. So if we hook that up, the parameter name is color, because if you look, that's what we called our parameter over here. And the value is going to be a linear color based on whether or not the destination teleporter is true or is valid. So if it is valid, which is true, then we want to pass in our color that was specified in the editor. And if it's not true, then of course in your implementation you can do whatever you want, but for the purpose of this demo, we're just gonna kinda set it to a gray color. So 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, something like that. All right, so if we go ahead and we run this now, well, I guess first we have to create one of these things. So let's drag this into the world. And you can see that it already has this gray color because we currently don't have any teleporter assigned to it. Um, oh, we forgot to check the little eye here. So check the little eye here next to maintain actor rotation. And compile. Okay, so now we see our three properties that we had in the video at the beginning. And currently there is no other destination portal, so we need to make one. So we'll put one here, and we'll copy it, and put another one over here. And I'm just going to kind of do the same thing I did before, so that it's, we can easily reference them. So if you make this a little smaller, kind of drag it over here, move these guys over here, copy this again. And we want to just delete all this stuff because we don't need it. Okay. And under the starter content, there's some nice little textures. We'll say brick on this side. I don't quite remember which ones I used before, but it doesn't really matter. Okay. So we'll set both of these to red. And again, they're not going to show as red until we actually hook them up. So the destination teleporter for this guy 
is this guy. So we should probably give him good names here. So for the one on the brick, I'm going to call BP Telly Brick Red. And for the one on the grass, I'm going to call BP Telly Grass Red. So the brick one's destination is the grass one, and you'll see as soon as I set it, it turns to red. And the grass one's is the brick one's. All right, so you can already see that the colors are hooked up and working. But of course, if we walk into it right now, well, we have a few issues. One is that we're just colliding with it, so we need to fix that. And the reason that's happening is because our portal mesh, if you click on it, its collision preset is set to block all dynamic. We want to set it to overlap all so that we can overlap with it and not get blocked by it. And we probably want to change can character step up on to no because we don't really want to step up on top of it. So now if we go ahead and run it, you can see we can walk through it, but of course it's not going to teleport us anywhere yet because we haven't written that code. Now, one thing we can do real quick since we're in the constructor is, if you remember in the beginning of the video, I showed you that if you try to set a teleporter to teleport to itself, it won't work. And it will just simply go back to none. And the way I did that was really easy. So right here in the constructor, before we do anything, we want to get the destination teleporter, and we want to check if it is equal to ourself. And to get yourself, you just right click, say get self, and get a reference to self, drag that in, and we'll say if they are equal, which again is bad, we don't want this, then we're going to set the destination teleporter to null, because we don't want it to be ourselves. And drag this out. And if it's false, everything's good. We want to also go back over here. Uh, I like to make a little reroute node and kind of make it look a little nicer so you can see exactly what's happening. So again, if the teleporter destination that we selected is ourselves, then we want to set it to null, and then we can continue to do what we want to do. So we'll test that real quick. Go ahead and run it. Or I guess we don't need to run it. Go ahead into the editor and select this guy and try setting him to the brick grid, and you'll see it immediately goes to none because we don't want to set it to ourselves. So we'll set it back to grass. Okay, so now we got the color set up. Now we want to set up the actual teleporting. So to do that, go back to your teleporter and go to the event graph. And we don't really need any of this stuff, so I'm just going to delete it. So we want to right click on our portal mesh, which again is the cylinder, the colored cylinder. And we want to say add on component begin overlap. So this is going to get called whenever we overlap with the teleporter. And we want to get this actor that has overlapped with us, and we want to check if the actor can teleport. So we're going to make a little function here real quick that says, can actor teleport? Question mark. And it's going to be good. We want to set this to private, pure, and constant. And basically what we're doing is saying that it's private because no other classes are going to be calling this function other than ourselves. And it's pure and it's const because it's not going to actually be changing anything about our class. It's just simply going to return a bool. So again, we'll make an output parameter here. And it's going to return a bool. And the bool is can teleport. OK, so the first thing we want to check, oh, and one, one more thing. We need an input pin for the actor that's trying to teleport. So we'll just call it actor. OK. So the first thing we want to check is, can the actor, or I guess we want to check, is it a character? Because we don't really want like bullets and stuff like that teleporting. We really only want the character teleporting. If you want other stuff to teleport, then you can just modify this function to do whatever you want. But right, for right now, we're just going to say only characters can teleport. So we're going to cast this to a character and hook that up. Now, if this cast fails, we're just going to return false. So I'm going to copy this return node and drag it down here. And we'll say can't teleport is false. And that will be the end of that. But if it is a character, then the next thing we want to check 
is if the character is already in our incoming actors. Now, the reason we need to do this, and it will make more sense once we get it a little bit more fleshed out, is that imagine if you tried to teleport to a teleporter, and as soon as you get there, this event would get triggered again, and then it would try to teleport you back to the other teleporter, and then it would get triggered again, and you would just endlessly teleport back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So really what you want is when you teleport to a teleporter, you don't want to immediately teleport back until you leave that teleporter and then walk back into it. So that's kind of the system we're going to set up. So the incoming actors are the actors that are being teleported to us. And so if an actor is being teleported to us, we don't want to teleport it back as soon as we get it. And again, this will make a little bit more sense or a lot more sense once we have the whole system done. But for now, we just want to say um, if our inc incoming actors does not contain this actor, so get actor, oops, not that, get actor at the bottom. And this is, this is just the same as doing this. I just don't like dragging pins off everywhere. So we want to say not Boolean. And that's what we're going to return. So again, just to recap real quick, we can only teleport if the actor that's overlapping with us is a character. And we will only teleport that character if it's not an incoming actor, meaning it was not just teleported to ourselves. So compile, save that, go back to the event graph. And in here, we can say other actor can actor teleport. And we'll do a branch off of this. Oops. And if it can teleport, we just want to make sure that our destination teleport is actually set to something. So we'll grab this. And one cool feature is that so I want to check if this is valid, and instead of doing like is valid and making a whole other node, you can just right click and say convert to validated git, and it will convert this pin to a getter that returns it, and it also returns if it's valid or not. So we'll just put this right here, and we'll use our validated git, and if it is valid, then we essentially want to teleport it. Now, we actually instead of telling, teleporting it right here, we want to actually tell the other teleporter to teleport it. And the reason we want to do that is because the other teleporter needs to know about it so that it can add it to its incoming actors list. So to tell the other teleporter about it, we're going to make a little event here called, um, what should we call it? Add custom event. And we will call it incoming teleport. And this needs to take in two things. It needs to take in the actor that's trying to teleport. So call this incoming actor. And it needs to take in the teleport or the teleporter that invoked the action. So this is going to be a BP teleporter object reference. And we'll call this the invoking teleporter. So again, this will get called whenever we, oh, I spelled incoming wrong. This will get called whenever somebody is saying, hey, we want to teleport an actor to you. And they'll say, this is the actor we want to teleport, and I am the teleporter that's trying to do that. So back up here, we just want to call off of our destination teleporter, incoming teleport. And we'll say, the actor that's incoming is this guy. And I'm going to go ahead and make this a little cleaner just so we can read it easier by making some reroute nodes. All right, that's a little better. And the invoking teleporter, the guy that's invoking the teleport, is ourself. So get self. All right, so again, just to recap, uh, somebody overlaps with the teleporter, we say, hey, can this actor teleport? If it can, we make sure that we have a destination teleporter. And if we do, we tell the destination porter that it has an incoming teleport. And we pass the actor and ourselves. So back over here, 
I'm going to make a little function to handle an incoming teleport. And I'm just going to call it handle incoming teleport. And it needs to take in two things. It needs to take in the incoming actor. And again, it is just a actor. And it needs to, oops, and it needs to take in the invoking teleporter. And this is a BP teleporter. Okay, so the first thing we want to check is that we haven't already received this actor as an incoming actor, which we probably never will, but we just want to make sure. So we'll say get incoming actors and we'll check if it already contains our incoming actor. And if it does not, then we can continue. If it does for some reason, then we don't want to do anything because we are already, we'll already be teleporting it somewhere else. Okay, so once we have that, we will go ahead and add it to our incoming actors. So incoming actors add, and we want to add our incoming actor. So we'll say incoming actor like so. And the next thing we need to do is basically set this incoming actor's location to the location of our teleporter. Now you're probably thinking that this is super simple and all we say is, hey, set this actor's location to wherever our location is. But it's not quite that simple. And the reason it's not quite that simple is because if you go and you look at your character, you'll see his origin is actually in the center of him. But the teleporter's origin is at the bottom. So if we set the guy's position to the teleporter's position, the guy will be put like that. And that can cause a lot of weird issues. Sometimes you'll get stuck in the ground. Sometimes it will pop you below the ground. Sometimes it will work. But most of the time, bad things happen. So we need to find a better way to set the actor's location. And the way we're going to do that is basically saying we're going to get the delta position between this portal and this portal and we're going to move the actor by that amount. So if this portal's up here, or we'll make a very simple example. If this portal is right above that portal, pretend like it's exactly above that portal, and we walk into this portal, then instead of just setting this actor's position to that position, which will get us here, we want to move the character by however far these two are apart. So let's say this thing is 50 units above this one. Then we'll move the actor up, oops, not that guy. We'll move our character up 50, and it will be exactly where we want it to be. Um, this will also work if we like jump into the portal. So if we're running and we jump and we hit the portal right here, we'll come out of the portal right here. So that's the reason we're gonna do uh, a little bit more work than simply just setting the location to the location. Because I know when you're first watching this, you're probably like, Oh, this is super easy, but there's actually a little bit more to it if you want it to work correctly. So we'll put all these guys, put these guys back here on the ground. Now, to find the actor's location that we want to set it to, um, it's actually not too hard. We basically want to get the location of ourselves. So get actor location. And again, this is the teleporter that we're teleporting to. And we want to say, we want to subtract that actor minus from the invoking teleporter's position. So get invoking teleporter, get actor location. So now we have a vector from the invoking teleporter to ourselves. And we want to take that and we want to add it to the incoming actor's current location. So incoming actor, we'll get that get incoming actor, get actor location, and we'll do a plus. Oops, we want vector plus vector, not vector plus int. Vector plus vector. All right, so we're getting the location. Ugh. We're getting the location of our character, which is this guy. 
and we're adding to him the difference between the locations of the portal. So this is the location that we actually want to set the actor to. So we'll come up here and we'll say incoming actor set actor location and we'll drag this in like that. And again, the new location is this guy. And we probably want to set teleport here just so we avoid um, anything that will happen if we didn't teleport. And for now, that's basically all we want to do. Uh, we haven't done the rotation stuff yet. We'll get to that next. Let's just make sure this is all working. So uh, we actually need to call this function. So come back here and in incoming teleport, we'll call handle incoming teleport. And we'll just hook these guys up. Now if we go ahead and run this, hopefully we teleport. Looks like we did that way and we did not that way. Oh, right, I forgot one thing. So the reason we're not teleporting back is because our character is still part of that incoming actors list. So it's not gonna let us teleport. So we need to remove it whenever we walk out of the teleporter. Because remember, if we go through the teleporter, we wanna be able to sit here, but then once we walk out of it and we come back in, we wanna be able to teleport again. So we need something that says when we walk out of it, we can then teleport again. And that's actually really easy to do. We just want to come back to our event graph and we want to add the on component end overlap to our portal mesh. And I'm going to drag this one up here because it's kind of related to the one above it. And all we want to do here is remove the actor from our incoming actors. So we'll say remove item other actor like that. So now when we walk out of the portal that we just teleported to, um, we'll get removed from its incoming actors and we'll be able to use it as a teleporter. So if we come back, go in it, go out, and now it seems to be working. And you can see whichever way we go through the teleporter, even if we're jumping, is the way we're going to come out of the teleporter. So the only other thing that was in the video that I showed you before was that um, I had a little checkbox here, and we did add it, but it doesn't do anything yet, for maintaining the actor's rotation. Now, if you don't care about that, you can probably just end the tutorial here. But if you do want to see, see how to do that, it's pretty easy, and I'll show you how to do that real quick. So, we are basically want to go back to our handle incoming teleport. And right here at the end, after we've set the location, we want to check this pool. So we'll do a branch and actually we want to say, so we want to say if we're not going to maintain, so if we're not going to maintain the actor's rotation, then we actually want to do something because if we're maintaining the actor's rotation, we don't need to do anything, right? But if we're not maintaining it, then we want to update it to be the rotation of the teleporter. And it's good to have a little, because it's hard, it's hard to see which way this is facing unless you actually click on it. So we're going to go ahead and add a arrow component. And arrow components by default, uh, they only show up in the editor, so they won't show in the actual game. And we want to attach this to the scene root. Make sure you say attach and not make new. And we'll just like drag it up here somewhere like that. And you can see, make sure it's aligned with the x-axis, the red and the red. Make sure they're aligned. Um, Oh, and it has some weird scale to it because we had our mesh scale, so make sure you go and you revert the scale on it if that changed. All right, so there we go. So there's our arrow. That's the way it's facing. And if you look at it in the world now, then these both have little arrows on them. And if you run it, the arrows don't show, which is exactly what we want. Uh, so now that we have that little arrow, we can come back here. And we want to rotate the actor. So we're going to say get actor location, which again is the location, or sorry, get actor rotation, which is the rotation of the teleporter that we teleported to. And we want to take our incoming actor and we want to set actor rotation like so. And we want to set the actor's rotation to the rotation of the teleporter. So if I come back here and this one's already facing the gap, but this one isn't. So I'm going to turn this one around like so. And now they're both facing the gap. Now, if I go ahead and run this, you'll notice there's still an issue. So if I run into this guy, you'll see something kind of weird happens. Um, oh, did I even check? 
Oh, okay, so by default, it's set to false. Um, in the previous video, I had it set to true by default, so probably go ahead and do that. Or I guess you can set it to whatever you want, but just make sure you're following along during the tutorial so th the same things are happening. So we're going to default it to true. Um, and then back over here, we're just going to uncheck it on both of these guys so that we don't maintain it. Okay, so now if you go through it, you'll see something weird happens. He kind of snaps around to the correct location, but then he keeps going the direction he was going before. And that's because we're not actually changing the controls rotation, which is the thing that's actually controlling where the actor is moving. So to do that, we still want to do this because that, that gets us the first step done. The next thing we want to do is get the controller. Or what is it called? Get, I'm pretty sure it's get, oh, get instigator controller. Yeah. So we want to get the controller from the incoming actor. And we want to check and make sure that this is valid. Because if we ever change our code to, you know, maybe we allow bullets to go through teleporters, uh, bullets aren't going to have an instigator controller. So we're not even going to care about this. But for things that do have a controller, we need to update the rotation of that as well. So we'll get the controller, make sure it's valid. If it is valid, we'll say set control rotation. And we want to set this to the same rotation that we used back here. So we'll just drag this over, make it a little nicer. All right. So now if we go ahead and run this, it should work the way we expect it to. So we run in and we run out facing the correct way, run in, run out facing the correct way. So I think we're pretty much done. Um, you know, you can test it a little more if we make a copy of this and move it over here. Oops, we didn't actually copy it. Make a copy, move it over here. Make a copy of this one, move it over here. Um, you know, we can change these to like a blue color and a blue color. And we can say, oh, we got to rename them. So this one we'll call BP Tele Brick Blue. And this one we'll call BP Tele Grass Blue. And we'll set them up to go to each other. So the destination of this one is Tele Grass Blue. And the destination for this one is Tele Brick Blue. And we'll just go ahead and select Maintain Aspect Ratio. So now the red one goes to the red one. And the blue one goes to the blue one. And it's just that easy. So that pretty much sums up the tutorial. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.